Hello everyone. Hi. Um, I, this is only the second one and I couldn't find the start stream button or go live button, but it just took me a minute. I figured it out. Um, hello. Welcome. I am so glad for you to be here. Welcome to our class about the immune system and how it works. I'm really excited about this class. There's so much that um, I have and that I want to share with you. So let's get started. Um, oh, before we do that, I want to just take care of a couple housekeeping things. Number one, if you would like to ask questions or make comments, chat with other people um, in the live chat. And there is, you do have to log in just because YouTube for safety won't allow anonymous comments. Um, however, you can just sign in. Google and YouTube are the same. So if you click that sign in button, um, when it says you must sign into chat, you can put in your Google um, address and that will be fine. You don't have to create a separate account. Um, or if you are uncomfortable with that and want privacy, you could create a YouTube account for future chats or this one, I suppose, if you're good at multitasking. Um, and um, create a, a Google account just to chat on YouTube so that you can comment on people's videos or um, whatnot um, during the education craziness that we have online now. So, okay, so that is how that works. Um, the chat will go, that does publish with the video, but that is what that is for. Okay, welcome everyone. So today I have a couple goals. One of the things I learned from our last live chat, I don't have anyone in front of me, but my brain's clicking a little bit better than it was the other night um, when we talked about autoimmunity, which by the way, if you did not see that one before, um, definitely watch it afterwards because what we're gonna talk about today is the correct functioning of the immune system. Autoimmunity is what's defined as our culture by an incorrect functioning of the immune system which is not actually correct. Um, it is a correct functioning of the immune system, but it's it's strapped. And there are, are major, um, it, it has to do the best with what it has, basically, or it has to work with an extreme situation when we get to an autoimmune disease. Um, so we can talk, um, I talk about that in the autoimmune section. So that'll be a beautiful one to watch after this if you have not already seen it. My main two goals for today, um, according to my outline here, <laughs> are number one, to discuss how the immune system works. Not in detail, but in, in real life application. Um, my goal for this video is for persons, individual persons, mothers, family persons, fathers, grandmothers, you know, whoever, to understand the big picture of what's happening so you know how to support your body. That's my ultimate goal. Um, it's not to explain the intricate and get the right names of the cytokines that are released when a mast cell explodes. Um, that's not what we're going for. I do have some videos um, already posted on the immune system that do go into that in a little more depth, but this is a practical video. This is about what is your immune system doing? How do you know what it's doing? And how can you support what it's doing? So let's get into that. Number two is how to support it. So I already gave that away. Okay, number one, inflammation. How does the, it does the immune system work? We hear a lot about inflammation, right? Inflammation is bad. Where is it? Inflammation is the way that the body uses primarily to respond to attacks. Think about it. What is, what is inflammation? It is fluid, right? Rushing fluid. The things that happen for that, again, on a cellular level, which I talk about more in the other video that I'm, I'm just not going to go into today. What happens with inflammation? There are chemicals respond, responses happens when cells get damaged that allow blood vessel permeability. So bigger things like white blood cells can get through. More fluid will come to the area. Heat will come to the area because all of this helps the immune system clean up the mess so we can move on. So you get a bee sting, what do you get? Swelling. You twist your ankle, what do you get? Swelling, <laughs> right? Um, and then things we can't see. Um, you have a, a leaky gut and damage to your gut wall um, from toxins. What do you get? Swelling, right? We get loose stools often, sometimes constipation. We get mucus if it's really bad, um, bleeding. So same types of things. Allergies, we understand that a little bit. I've got a little bit of allergy myself at the moment. It was a it was a pollen um, rich day today. 
What happens with allergies? Well, our mucous membranes get attacked by things that our body perceives as enemies, or it just is an invader. So it will create mucus fluid to push that invader out. So really the processes of inflammation are the way that the body defends itself from pretty much everything, which is really cool. Acute inflammation is really helpful and it is what helps us to heal our bodies. If we did not have inflammation, we would not be able to heal and repair our bodies. I will say that again. If inflammation did not exist in our bodies, we would not be able to heal and repair them. Now you say, Amy, lots of people are talking about inflammation and how bad it is. Yes, chronic inflammation is a problem because chronic inflammation is when the body can't fix it and it keeps trying and trying and trying. That uses up a tremendous amount of resources for our body. It causes our body to be in a state of, of uh, response, right? So we're going to be more likely to react to other things because we're already on alert. Um, it's, it's using up resources. The immune system can only do so much. And so it's going to work on um, the inflammation in your 27 joints that hurt. And now your gut lining is hurt. And it just is not going to deal with your spring allergies very well. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Spoilers. So if the immune system is doing some things, it's not going to be able to do other things as well. Bandwidth, it's, it's a thing. So when we look at inflammation that's chronic, we definitely don't want that. And there are other things we'll talk about um, that can come online down the line when you have chronic inflammation um, that are symptoms of chronic inflammation. So at the end or in the second half of this, after we set up what the immune system is, we're going to talk about what symptoms we're seeing and how to support the body there. So we'll get into more there. All right. Humoral immunity is the other option that the body has to work. The immune system has to work. Humoral immunity is what we also call specific immunity. This is your specific remembering white blood cells. The ones that are like, that chicken pox, I remember that. You you can't be here. Um, or or whatever, that cold virus we had when we were five or, or anything like that. So humoral immunity re remembers. It has identifier antibodies that go around or are looking for something that remembers. So in a functional immune system, we have inflammation. Something happens. A bee sting. Uh, your ankle gets sprained or twisted. Um, you got um, some poison on your skin um, from poison ivy or a chemical. Um, maybe you breathed in something like really strong chlorine fumes because um, you worked at the pool. What is the body going to do? To protect you, it's going to cause inflammation to happen. So that's going to be a swollen ankle, um, swelling with the bee sting, with the, the fumes, right? You, you, you've been exposed to bleach even. You get kind of a little stuffy and runny nose. Well, the body is trying to flush toxins out. And then you also have a permeable membrane um, that is allowing things in to repair the damaged cells that you just damaged with a chemical exposure. So that that is good. And then the things that turn that immune system on, turn it off when it's done. So there are specific things, COX-2, which is something that we you may recognize and we'll talk more about. COX-2 um, is one of those turning on and turning off people. It turns it on when um, sends the information to turn on inflammation. When it's there, it turns it off when the inflammation has achieved its goal and has healed that tissue. Hooray! All right, so immune system on and off. Um, when we have an overwhelm of the immune system, how could we get overwhelmed? How could our immune system get overwhelmed? There's a lot of things our immune system has to deal with. So number one, we have disease. Hmm, we're not thinking about that at all. Bacteria disease, um, parasites that are overgrowing, yeast and candida overgrowth, those things are damaging particularly to our cells. They also are things that produce toxins that damage the cells indirectly. Oh no, damaged cells. What happens? So inflammation happens because of damaged cells from the toxins that were released by a bacterial infection or parasite um, or a yeast overgrowth or something like that. Okay, so we have toxins, damaged cells, 
Now the inflammation comes in to clean up the damaged cells, help the new tissue regeneration, and then it turns back off. Great, um, this is a great system. I'm doing this simple on purpose, um, like walking through the same steps because it's really important to see that it, it is the same thing. Okay, then we have detoxing and die off. So I work with people on the GAPS diet. I'm Amy Mahali with Be Well Clinic, by the way, in case you didn't know what channel you're on. <laughs> I forgot to say that. Okay, so I work with people on the GAPS diet, gut and psychology syndrome by Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride, who um, created a leaky gut healing protocol um, getting on 20 years ago. When we have probiotics that we introduce through fermented foods or a probiotic capsule, we sometimes get something called die off or the Herxheimer reaction or Herx reaction. Die off is when your cells, excuse me, die off is when the good bacteria or microbes you just ate interact with your causing trouble bacteria in your body at the current moment. And that war releases a lot of collateral damage. So this cell explodes. It has death like chemicals that go and damage other cells. There's also a toxin. It was kind of like eking out that was causing certain symptoms. And now it explodes at once, releasing all of its toxin at once, which goes to tissue. It creates more symptom of the symptom that you were having already. So your eczema flares up because you started probiotics, right? So all of that happens. What's happening? There are toxins damaging cells and we are going to go to inflammation. Now let's look at our own immune system. What happens when we feed our immune system? It goes and kills stuff um, or cleans up dusty corners or works on inflammatory processes that we're already undergoing and tries to finish them up. What does that cause? That can cause toxins to be released. And we have a toxic damage of the cells which causes inflammation. We call this a healing reaction. So we get sick, we have die off, we have healing reactions. Oh, and then detox, I forgot to do that. So what if there are toxins already in your cells and now we give them minerals or B vitamins um, or iodine and all of a sudden our cells can now respirate or, or push out the toxins that are in their cell, which are damaging and hindering their ability to work well. So no good. So they push those out. Well, what is that going to cause? Those toxins are probably going to go somewhere and cause cell damage, which then leads to inflammation and the immune system is trying to clean up. So all of these things are the same, right? The, the, the reason for them is different, is different, but all of them ultimately end up in the same pattern and path. That is why it can be so incredibly difficult to figure out what are um, die-off reactions versus am I just getting a cold? I get that call all the time. Is this die-off or am I just getting a little sick? It feels the same. Has anyone, raise your hand in your room, has anyone been confused about that before? Because it is a big deal. And it really confused me, which is why I studied this, and now I just absolutely love the immune system and how it works. It's so cool. So it, it is the same, right? Because Because the process for dealing with that is the same. Toxins, something happens, toxins get made, the inflammation happens, the body's trying to clean up the damage, repair the cells, and move forward. So that is the basic pattern. The only thing that changes is why. Now, it is helpful to know why. Because if it is a die-off reaction because you're taking too many probiotics, let's slow down a little bit. Right? That's a good thing to do. Um, don't overwhelm your body. It's not helping it. Um, so slow down. Um, what about um, if it is a toxin release from our body? Well, that would be good to some extent. But again, if you're overwhelmed, you're swollen. I have seen people with their skin swells, actually. like Their whole body is so on alert and inflamed. And there's so much damage that when that signal to do inflammation happens, boom, they just, everything swells. They get a little bit swollen face. It's crazy. People on gaps sometimes after a month are like, I, they had no idea. They were probably carrying three or four pounds of water weight. That uh, might be an exaggeration. I don't know how much water weight, but a significant amount of water weight. And it's not because they've lost weight, but they've lost the water because their inflammation is just calmed down and they have a different face shape. It's really, really crazy. 
So that definitely can happen. Um, your sinuses all of a sudden aren't a little bit stuffy all the time. You got a little mucus in the morning every single day. You got a little thing in your throat clearing like I do in allergy season. Just a little thing, a little bit of mucus. Um, that happens every day because the inflammation is there. So when we start taking the toxins out, that, that gets better, which is good. What about a bacteria or virus? So it's good to know when we have an infection happening. Um, sometimes we just, most of the time, in my recommendation, we just support the body, which we're going to talk about in the second, right, second point. Uh, we support the body in helping do what it's trying to do. So we don't, I am not, we do not win wars by killing things, right? That doesn't work. Um, the way that we come to really good balance and health in our body is by helping the, the balance of the ecosystem of our body to support the good, helpful microbes that we want and to not be comfortable for the microbes that don't bring us good. So they just move along. Um, a good example of that is candida, yeast. Lots of people are on an anti-candida diet. They feel better, which is true because less candida, less toxins, less inflammation, all these symptoms go away. Great. What happens when you go off an anti-candida diet? It usually comes back. You flare back up, your symptoms get worse, and you have to be on it again. Well, why is the candida there? That's the question we're not asking often enough. Why is the candida there? Yeast and candida are like bugs. Bugs' purpose in this world, fungus's purpose in this world, what do they do in a forest? They break down trees. They de decompose. So funguses, which a yeast is a fungus, right? So funguses are in our body to eat dead and dying tissue. And it's actually been demonstrated. I was just reading a beautiful book, which is upstairs. I'm sorry. It's called The Champ or Pasteur. It's like the, the lost chapter of history or something. I will, when I post this video, link it in the description. Beautiful book. I am loving it. I'm like 50 pages in. I think it's the best book I've read all year. Like it's so, so good. Um, it's just walking through the history of some of this microbial discovery. The champ discovered things a little bit sooner than Pasteur. Um, and Pasteur often stole his work um, and was... I, th I think he messed some things up. Um, so I'll let you read the book for yourself. But when you look at the experiment and the conclusion, um, Bichamp really understood what he was talking about. Bichamp had a theory called the terrain theory or the, um, what are the other words for it? Cellular theory, it's been called. Uh, there's another name I can't think off the top of my head. So this theory is basically that it's the terrain of the environment that causes the situation not a particular germ coming. So he would not say that cholera comes to create the symptoms of cholera. And the way you get it is, you know, through the air, the cholera comes or through the water, the cholera comes and infects you. You have a hundred percent chance of getting that infection. If it invades your body, um, you're going to get cholera. Well, we know that lots of people who drank cholera filled water didn't get sick, even though lots and lots of people did get sick, right? So what is the difference? So he would argue terrain. It's the, it's the terrain, the ecology of your body um, or the environment that, that changes things, um, what, that determines the outcome of what's happening. He studied the silkworm um, in the, gosh, I'm sorry, I'm so bad at dates. When the silkworms were getting dead by a larva, they were dying from a larva, a parasite. Um, he figured out what was going on with that. He also helped some grape winemakers figure out what was wrong with their grapes and what to do about the fungus problem they were having. So he really didn't just look at the body. He looked at um, living beings and saw a commonality, and it's really cool. Okay. So I'm sorry. I'm totally off on a point that I can't. Oh, yeah. So we want to look at what the body's um, environment is. So our goal with candida, candida is there to kill things, or to eat dead and dying things. And Bechamp proved um, with, um, with certainty that candida does not eat healthy tissue. And this is good because I wasn't sure on this point um, until I was just reading this book the other day. Um, candida cannot, yeast does not eat unhealthy tissue. It only eats damaged, dead, and dying tissue. If you have a lot of dead, damaged, and dying tissue in your body because you have a lot of toxins, do you think you have a lot of yeast? Right? Wouldn't that make sense? The other thing that does a lot of damage to our body are heavy metals, and a lot of people with 
certain metal exposure like um, amalgam fillings, um, other things that expose us. We have exposure to metals in our air, in our water, in our food. Um, there are other things that contain metals that we know, right? We put metals in vaccines. We put metals um, in our in our teeth fillings. We put metals um, in our pop cans and our canning cans, right? Those are aluminum things. Um, we we have tin foil, right? There's plenty of reasons and ways that we can get metal exposure. If that metal exposure is large and you can't detox it fast enough, it will get stored in damaged cells, which then will get eaten by candida because damaged cells are not helpful, right? It's decomposing dead tissue. All right, so we have that idea. All right, so then we go on to, let me see where I wanna jump back on. The environment of the body, cleaning up the body. So number one, not really to the how to support the immune system, but this is like how to not have inflammation. When we eat things, or do things, or have exposure to things that cause toxin damage, we are making our immune system work hard, right? So number one, the first thing you can do to support your immune system is cut out things that are causing toxin exposure. That is smells, artificial smells like Glade plugins and car smeller thingies and um, essential oils that are not pure essential oils, therapeutic essential oils, but are actually chemically manifested and, and made, right? So anything in the air, uh, chlorine in your showers, um, chlorine in the swimming pool, right? So limit to the extent that's possible all the things that are in your environment. A uh, new carpet, the glues and the, the paint, new paint, all of these are, if you can smell it, it's a toxin. Um, so it's, it's coming to you. All right, so number one, eliminate those things. And I do have a checklist. I'm trying to remember if I have much of a blog post about it. I do have a checklist I give to my patients when they come into the clinic that helps you walk through your house. Um, if you want to email at office at bewellclinic.net at any point, I'd be happy to send that um, two page, three page sheet to anyone who wants to go through their house and clean up. Okay, office at bewellclinic.net. Number two, um, we have things in our water. So getting the chlorine out of your water and potentially the fluoride. So Berkey filters like way over here and, and reverse osmosis. And then there's just a Brita or a pure filter, which takes quite a thing, a lot of things out. That's mostly what I use. All right, so we have the toxin exposure. Great, so we have gone through our lives and gotten the toxins out as much as possible. That has helped our immune system. Number two. Getting rid of things that you know are hard for your body or you have intolerances and allergies to. The ultimate goal for me, for you, would be to heal your leaky gut so your body doesn't absorb proteins that shouldn't be absorbed, like gluten protein or casein protein. However, in the meantime, if you know that you don't tolerate milk very well, pure milk, um, but you're okay with sour cream, right? Take the things out that are causing you trouble to give your body a break, especially when it's feeling overwhelmed. So I'm okay with sourdough bread. But if I have it now in the spring when I have other things, it's just a little bit too much. So um, I don't have sourdough bread as often in the spring when everything is flourishing um, because I'm, my immune system still remembers and responds to things a little bit more um, than it. It's still a little excited <clears throat> about some pollen. Um, so I just give it a break by doing detox baths most nights. Um, eliminating things that I know are just a little bit hard. My body has to work a little bit hard um, to, to deal with them, right? Okay, foods, toxins, number one, foods, number two. Um, number three, we can feed our bodies with immune supporting foods. <clears throat> and I'm gonna talk about those different ones. <clears throat> Anyone on and wants to ask any questions before I kind of move into um, the different treatments and symptoms? You can chat in here. Um, the login is just your Google. It does save um, to this video, which is will be published on YouTube, but um, yeah. Okay, not seeing any yet. I will stall for just a minute. Um, what else do I want to tell you about? Nothing, it's fine. I will stop stalling. Okay, so how it works is hopefully what we talked about. So to sum up, ooh, one more thing I wanted to say. I'm glad I'm summing up.
So we talked about humora, which is your memory. We talked about inflammation. These are the two arms of the immune system is how Dr. Natasha refers to them, which I like. Arm number one, inflammation happens a lot. Just your ankle, bee sting, allergies, um, that food that got in. Um, if you listen to the autoimmune PMG talk, <clears throat> you hit your head and you have some brain cells that leaked into your blood system. Inflammation is the response. Okay. Well, what happens when this one's workload is so high? The humoral arm is called in. Humoral remembers things, right? Do we want the humoral to remember the irritant, the general irritant of cottonwood trees like mine does? No, we don't. Because when it remembers, anytime one little cottonwood tree um, protein gets into the bloodstream, it's going to tag it, attack it, mount a huge response, freak the system out because it has labeled it as an enemy, because it has been called into a job that's not really its job. So general inflammation works on cleanup done, cleanup done, cleanup done. So if we are able to be in that pattern of cleanup done, we generally are here, cleanup done, right? So we're doing this. Humoral has an eye out for that chicken pox and that um, measles and that, you know, whatever things that we have, that cold virus, right? So it has its eye out for all these different things. When that happens and the humoral starts taking over because this one's overwhelmed, it's off screen even, um, this humoral will start remembering things that are coming and are deemed threats. So if you have spring allergies and you got a piece of cotton in your eye when you were a child multiple times and your eye swelled so much that it was swollen shut, do you think the overwhelmed, my overwhelmed inflammatory system probably asked the humoral immune system to remember that? Yeah, that caused a lot of damage, right? So when it starts getting to be spring and cotton tree floating white fluff in this, <laughs> the not snow snow, um, my system is on high alert. Now, every year for the most part, that has calmed down. Um, for me, right? Because I'm calming down my whole system, my inflammation is down. So there is hope, even if you are having that. But just for example, okay, the so humoral system remembers that, or the humoral system remembers the gluten, because that causes a lot of damage in the gut lining if it's not broken down properly, or the casein, or the lactose, or the peanuts, or you know whatever else here. So when we have a specific um, memory, an allergy, a true allergy to something, um, or an allergy that's going to come up on a scratch test giantly, not like a little red, but like it's clearly a problem, then your humoral arm is probably involved. What about when the immune system is really overwhelmed and the humoral is involved? What does the immune, the inflammatory system do? This system will start reacting to pretty much everything. Um, I say that in a very broad statement for some people, it is very broad, right? Have you known someone who was reacting to foods and now they can eat like three things and only if they rotate them, right? So what is happening there? Or you get an allergy test, a scratch test, and the people come back, your report comes back and talking to the doctor. And what you will say afterwards is, I'm allergic to everything I ever ate. That's because your immune system, your inflammatory system is just reacting because it is, it's worried. It, its response is in almost fight or flight mode, right? It just reacts to everything. Okay, so we have a super reactive immune system that now is overreacting or hyperreacting to everything. The humoral system comes in to help. It's now remembering things. We are in a bit of a mess. Now, going back to the beginning as we talked about the immune system functioning, is any of this functioning wrong? right? It's not wrong. The immune system is doing the best with what it has. What is wrong is the situation we have put our bodies into, um, usually unwittingly. I am not a blaming person because we are all doing the best that we can. And we have interesting information in our culture and it's starting to come out, more truthful information is starting to come out, which is great. Okay. So we're all doing the best that we can. I'm not in any kind of blame, but thinking about the situation that the average person does. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. There's like 178,000 food chemicals in processed foods. In like if you were to take them all from a grocery store and, and figure out what's in all of them. 
Um, you know, I've heard everywhere from like 25 to, I don't know, probably over a hundred chemicals that most women in their normal morning routines put on their skin, right? So our just basic life that we are just taught that's just normal is full of toxins. And those are things that you are willingly buying, not just things that are in your water, like medicines that are in your water, because so many people are on medications and they pee and that gets recycled, um, or things get leached in from companies like DuPont, or, you know, it's not even things that people are doing on purpose to poison you, um, or accidentally to poison you, right? It's just things that we've done. So, all right. So number one, we already know we can clean this up. I will get off that thought process. We've put our bodies in a very difficult situation. And a lot of that inflammation is currently happening. So why do we have chronic inflammation? Because toxins are constantly damaging our bodies. Just the average American person, right? Even children now. Because their mom had so many toxins that they got passed on to the baby. So even probably in the womb and definitely very soon after birth, when we have babies born with eczema now. Like come out with eczema. There are so many toxins in our world that they're now... Um, you know, even getting passed on when we have babies. And so our babies and our children are starting with toxins too. So it's it's just a thing that we have to deal with in our world. So number one, limit exposure. Number two, support the immune system and detoxify, which we're going to talk about. Don't worry. Okay. Chronic inflammation is so prevalent because of this. Hopefully that makes sense. This is the hard where the feedback. I think I'm just looping on this point because I don't have this like, yes, it works. Um, maybe like this video and I can see the more likes and know that you're making sense. Okay, or it's making sense to you. So I'm assuming that makes sense. I'm going to move on. So we have toxins damaging, chronic inflammation. That's coming from chemicals, but it's also coming from food. And it's coming from our own gut microbes. Our bad microbes are going to cause um, toxin release, just like bacteria when you have like a cold. Um, bacteria, uh, parasites, all of those are going to put toxins in the circulation that cause damage too. Great. We know where we are. Now let's work on how to support the body. Number one, clean up. We already talked about environment, help our body leaky gut healing, get your, uh, your ecosystem, your microflora, your microbiome changed by changing the environment of your body. Um, that is all really important. I want to, to spend the last little bit of time talking about, um, and a little bit is probably 20 minutes or more, but talking about the different symptoms that we see with inflammation so we can understand them and see what the body is asking for or how we can support the body in those things. So hopefully that sounds good. All right, so thing number one, mucus. Mucus is what we see all the time, right? You got a little stuffy sinus thing that's some people do gaps because they just can't stand their stuffy sinus and let me tell you for someone who had chronic sinus inflammation which is just so uncomfortable every moment of my life even sleeping I slept but it you just you woke up and you were just sore like your head just hurt right um so that that's a little bit of inflammation what's going on there so number one figure out the source so is there an allergy? So lots of people who cut dairy out, for example, dairy produces mucus, so that can definitely be a, an issue. Um, number two, do you have a yeast infection? Just low grade irritating your sinuses. You could also have bacteria um, or a virus that you didn't quite kick to, um, but most often it's yeast um, that is in the sinuses. Okay, what, what do we do there? Um, there's something different if it's a yeast versus if it's an allergy versus if it is a food allergy or environmental allergy, or maybe there's a toxin. You just got new carpet, and ever since then, your nose has been stuffy um, for the last two months or whatever, right? So whatever these things are. So number one, find the source, and if possible, remove it. Hard to remove new carpet, right? So there's tricky things in here, right? This is why we have issues, but it's okay. So do your best to remove it. Or we will support it if we can't change the situation, right? Um, for bacterial or yeast infection, what I recommend is repopulating your sinus cavities with probiotics. There are two ways to do that. The less recommended way, you could put a little probiotic powder in a nasal rinse and do that. Um, but a, a better and see, certainly very effective 
most of the time way would be just to put some probiotic on your tongue before you go to bed. Probiotic powder is the best for this, just the easiest for this, but you could do a little bit of yogurt or kefir, milk kefir, kefir. Um, you could do a vegetable ferment. You want to be careful with the acidity being left on your teeth, so just be aware of that. So last thing before bed, you sleep, I'm sorry, you have a drink of water, um, you know, you're just done uh, for the night. Your kids are done for the night. We had last sip of water. And then you put some probiotic powder on your tongue. You use your teeth or your tongue to get it around on all your teeth. You are eventually going to swallow it. But some of it is going to stay here. And some of it's going to populate up your um, nasal passages to start populating your nose. I also usually, if I've got sinus stuffiness, um, that, that constant inflammation, I will take a little probiotic powder from my tongue when I first get it wet and just stick it up my nostrils. Um, not super far. Um, it will move. It's live. You have mucus. You have ciliary action. Like, it's fine. So just get a little bit in there. And if you are having trouble with your ears, if you're like a chronic ear plugged person or a lot of earwax, I would get either just some probiotic powder, dry, I wouldn't take it from your mouth. Um, so dry probiotic powder or a little probiotic powder with garlic and uh, olive oil is what I recommend for people who have maybe more chronic issues. So you just topically populate, right? And we're going to, at the same time, always do internal, meaning gut, repopulation of flora. All flora is born in the gut. So the flora that you have in your gut, sorry, yeah, goes everywhere else. And the flora that is everywhere has some colony amount in your gut. So if you have a little overgrowth of something in your sinuses, it's still in your gut. If we change it in your gut, it's going to seed good flora um, that will come and take over what's here. So what are we doing with probiotics? Notice I did not say that we go and get, what is it, nystatin to kill the yeast in your nose, right? That may have been your first thought. It's just going to come back. Why is it there? There's inflammation. There's toxins from something. Um, there's toxins just from cell death because you are allergic to the cottonwood trees. And, you know, so whatever it is, it's going to come back. If we crowd it out by putting good bacteria there to maintain the healthy mucous membrane linings, to set up camps so that there's no room for the candida, there's no need for the candida, also all the cells are taken care of so there's no cell death anymore, great. Now we don't have this issue anymore. So seed the gut, seed topically. Um, that's going to be true everywhere. It's true for eczema. That's true for diaper rash. That's true for yeast infections and jock itch and um, vaginal bacterial BV. Um, it's true for yeast infections. Um, it's true for bladder irritability. Um, you have an irritable bladder, you probably have toxins irritating that bladder lining and it's probably from bacteria growing in your bladder. Sorry, um, but we can populate that um, by putting topically on the groin area um, different probiotics. I really like using milk, kefir, or kefir there because um, it's very strong and also a good yeast. So that's a beautiful one. Make sure it doesn't have sugar in it or we're just going to feed what's already there. Um, homemade is best, but you can buy store-bought plain. Um, put it on um, after you wipe every time that you um, go to the bathroom at home. You know, put a little bit on and help repopulate that flora. Okay, topical population and internal or gut repopulation are going to be our, our probiotic ways to change the environment. Number two of changing the environment is food. We have to stop feeding the yeast sugar because the yeast will eat sugar. It doesn't just eat dead and dying cells. It will not eat healthy cells, but it will eat the sugar that you eat. And that includes breads and pastas and crackers. So we did this really cool experiment in my anatomy and physiology class in college. And I really encourage people to do this because it's just fun and it solidifies in your brain and your kid's brain what bread or crackers are. So it's best with like a saltine cracker, but you could definitely take a piece of bread. Not too much. Saltine is just a good amount, right? So take that saltine amount of a bread product and put it in your mouth and chew it. Um, and leave it there for five to 10 minutes. It will become sweet because starch when it is broken down,
by, I believe it's amylase. I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. Whatever the enzyme is that breaks down starches. When it is broken down, it, it becomes sugar. It is a complex sugar molecule. So when starch becomes sugar in your body, even if you don't eat it as sweet, your body is receiving it as sugar. So if you think about all of the sugar, sugar itself, it's a problem because uh, there's no nutritional value at all. It just is sugar. Our bread and pastas today are a problem also because they are just complex sugars that don't taste sweet, but they still are sugar. Traditionally made bread was from whole grains. Um, whole grains are um, whole grains are a nutritional uh, package. That package is meant to be able to feed a seed to sprout into a plant. You know, before before it can get enough food from its root system, it has to feed it for a certain amount of time. So when we have a a whole grain that's freshly ground, there's actually a ton of nutrition in, in that, as opposed to um, a shelled grain like a white flour. Um, there, that that's just starch. We've removed almost all the nutritional value in that, and you're just getting sugar. So that's gonna do. That's gonna feed candida and and give you some energy boost, right? That's a real thing. But it's not really feeding your body. It's feeding your flora. Hopefully, you have good flora, right? Okay, question. Thank you for asking a question. If we struggle with candida, is the problem chronic inflammation? Uh, yes and no. So my my observation and research has showed that I believe most of the time there is chronic inflammation, yes. And usually the chronic inflammation is happening because there are heavy metal, too many heavy metals present. Um, so if there's like, you really hit it hard. I did gaps for a year and a half. And I still, if I ate two apples instead of one, I would have weeks of sugar cravings until I got my amalgam fillings out and started to get the metals. Exposure was gone and I get the metals out. And then all of a sudden I could eat fruit. I could overeat fruit and I didn't have sugar cravings for days and days and days on end. So yes, there's chronic inflammation. My experience is mostly that chronic inflammation, especially if you've tried like good college try and it's still comes back. There's probably heavy metals that are damaging because those are a little bit difficult to get rid of. Um, but yes, chronic inflammation will cause death, cell death, which will have candida be present in large amounts. So in a simple answer, yes. And then if it's troublesome and you can't, like your inflammation's down or you've done everything right and it's still up, then I would look at heavy metals. So hopefully that um, answers. Thank you for the question. Okay, so... Re, one of the big reasons why we have toxins in our body is from our own bacteria, right? I said that. So repopulating your gut flora is good. Number two, we are going to move on to foods, foods that feed the immune system and don't feed the candida, right? So candida or, or bacteria or parasites. Um, parasites are often in our body, by the way, to eat the trash too. They're little bugs, right? So think about little bugs, fungus, parasites, bugs. They're all there to eat trash. Um, so when there's trash to be eaten, we're going to have bugs because it's better for us. The immune system is going to allow that. The body is going to choose to have them because it's better to have that really toxic chemical cleaned up. Um, candida, for example, eats mercury and turns it into a less toxic form that damages your body less. Of course, your body is going to keep candida around if you don't if you have a ton of mercury because mercury is incredibly damaging. Um, there's so many links to um, significant uh, neurological disorders with mercury. So, of course, we don't want mercury around. Candida is a much better option. Now, candida will produce toxins that causes inflammation, so that's going to be a problem too. Um, so, but it's less than the mercury toxicity. Okay. Food. Um, we want to eat good foods and nourishing foods. One for our immune system. So we feed our immune system. Very hungry. As a lot of things to do, the, a lot of things that the immune system does kills its cells. So it has to reproduce them all the time. So that's one of the reasons why we call it a hungry um, system. What are the building blocks of cells? Mostly protein, amino acids, and fat. Saturated fat um, is really important for phospholipid membranes. Uh, we need a lot of amino acids and we need minerals. 
right? So the immune system needs all of those things to function, which is why we want to feed it those things and why we go to nourishing soups and lots of fat. If you know me at all, what do I say? Just double your fat intake. That will probably take care of the problem. And about 75% of the time, it does, at least to some extent, right? Um, cod liver oil. Why is cod liver oil so amazing for immune system? It's mostly fat. It gives the immune system A and D, which it needs to build the cells that it needs to do the thing it's trying to do. So we have lots of feeding of the immune system, which will then help it to clean up the inflammation and turn that step off. Um, it will help it to go and clean up maybe your joint that's chronically inflamed. And now your body no longer sees um, toxins in the joint tissue or the collagen, which then like morph the collagen. And so then the body's attacking this morph thing and then it might attack other healthy collagen. That's a theory. I don't know that I think that that's actually true. Um, that the body attacks healthy. We'll see. Um, anyway, uh, so all of that happens. Okay. I had a thought I wanted to come back to and I just forgot it. One second. Immune system attacking. Nope, it was before that. Uh, I'll come back if it's important. Okay, so A and D we need for the immune system and to feed it. We also need minerals, which we um, I keep mentioning. What are minerals? Let's sidebar on that for a second. Because then I'm going to run through. I'll come back to mucus. Sorry, I know I ran away from that. But we'll come back to it. So fat-soluble vitamins are important for our body because they feed the immune system. And they also help with all cell repair. And regeneration. So the immune system needs these things to reproduce cells and all the other cells that are needing to be reproduced or recreated or or repaired need the same building blocks which are saturated fat, fat soluble vitamins and protein and amino acids and minerals. So when we have to replace cells then we, we need to do that. To have inflammation, ah I remembered it, COX-2 inhibitors. Let me just write it down. If we have um, inflammation, it's damaging cells. We have a lot of cells that need regenerated. Um, and that is one of the reasons why GAPS diet is so great because it is so full of nutrient dense foods that are like platters of cell regeneration parts so that we can regenerate things um, and places that have been not, never able to catch up. So now your liver can regenerate the cells that have been damaged and it can function better or fully um, is the goal, right? And then the liver can detoxify the toxins that have been building up in your tissue because it wasn't working as well. So if we can get cell regeneration building materials in, we are going to beat this chronic inflammation. We're going to be able to get past it. I'm going to be done with numbers. Another thing that is important um, is to allow the immune system to complete its immune inflammation system. COX-2 inhibitors, ibuprofen, and other such pain-killing medications. So one of the main ways, and we're just going to say ibuprofen, which is a COX-2 inhibitor, that's its medicine class. What it does is it comes in, when you take ibuprofen, it comes in and it tells your body, stop doing that inflammation thing, which takes the pain away, right? That's why it works, which is great. Except that COX-2 is also, if you remember, what stops the inflammatory process. So if you are on chronic pain medication, the inflammation cannot finish. And that's why when you try to stop it, you actually may have more because that COX-2 inhibitor is inhibiting all inflammation. And it's also why there are some really bad outcomes linked. It's one of the reasons why there's really bad outcomes linked with pain medications um, because repair to the body can't handle if it always has a COX-2 inhibitor present. Does that make sense? So there was an experiment that I really liked. I heard about at a Weston A. Price conference. Um, I've seen it published. I'm sorry, I can't remember where it is, um, but I believe that you could find it. But what happens is they took some rats and they gave them arthritis, right? Because they do stuff like that. They took half of them as a control group and half of them as a medication group. And they gave this half the ibuprofen or a COX-2 inhibitor. Can't remember which one it was. And then they just left this one alone. They did x-rays before this happened and then afterwards. The mice or rats, 
sorry, I can't remember, the, the rodents um, that received no medication in, I believe it was three months, had no signs of arthritis anymore. And the rats that had the medication, which clearly liked it, like they were in less pain, um, they still had inflammation and arthritis in their joints upon x-ray. So when we inhibit the process of inflammation, it just drove it home to me. When we inhibit the ending of inflammation, we inhibit healing. And that's just not something we want to do, right? None of us want to do that. So be aware of that. Now, if you take ibuprofen once, is it going to do this? Well, yes, temporarily, but is it going to be a problem? Probably not. So, you know, I'm not a um, necessarily anti, you know, if you had a function, you got a function. If you have a headache or a migraine and you got to present at work, like take an ibuprofen, right? But it should not be our go-to um, and it will not put us in a state of better health because we can't clean stuff up. This leads us to another discussion of vitamin C. So vitamin C can often be really, really helpful to call clear inflammation because the immune system uses vitamin C um, to, it's, you know, we know it's an anti-inflammatory, all that kind of stuff. So what happens? Vitamin C will, will do that. Um, just two things. Number one, we need vitamin C in the structure of our, our, uh, our cell buildings, I guess you would call them. So collagen has a lot of vitamin C. It's like the mesh in the concrete um, that helps hold it stiff. Um, other vitamin C, we need vitamin C everywhere. So all of our cell, our cell structure, um, if you have saggy skin, you may have collagen deficiency, but you may also have vitamin C deficiency. Um, joints that are hyperflexive, right? So we overflex, that is potentially a collagen deficiency, but also probably a vitamin C deficiency. And then leaky gut is scurvy. It is vitamin C deficiency in the gut. The lining's not strong enough. Maybe other problems too, but one of them is vitamin C. If you have easy bruising, that's a vitamin C deficiency. Um, if you have aneurysms in your family, you need to be taking vitamin C because that is a stretched and unstrengthened blood vessel wall is what an aneurysm is. So these are all symptoms of scurvy, um, bleeding gums, moving teeth, um, easy nosebleeds. So these are all things that are showing vitamin C deficiency. So huge, helpful to take it. Let's take vitamin C. Great. There's a lot of debate right now with this particular virus that's happening. What about, there's a lot of debate about vitamin C. Number one, C, the C you take matters. Ascorbic acid is not vitamin C. I should have brought that book. There is a diagram in a book called The Real Truth About Vitamins and Minerals, published by Celine River Press, that talks, or Chelsea Greenhouse Publishing. I can't remember which one. That talks about, it, it shows a diagram of the vitamin C complex. And the shell is ascorbic acid. It, it protects the vitamin C complex from getting destroyed by the stomach acid so it can get into the body. That's all ascorbic acid is, guys. It's only a shell. It acidifies your body a little bit, which is why you kind of feel good if you do like an emergency, but there is no actual vitamin C complexes inside of that. The really important ones, there's a vitamin K, there's a vitamin P, um, or complex K, complex P, or vitamin P, um, and then uh, other things that I'm blanking on right now. And those are the things that we know as the complex of C. So if you take vitamin C as ascorbic acid, you aren't taking vitamin C. Ways to get vitamin C from foods. Um, so powders that you can get or capsules would be uh, Camu Camu is good. Indian gooseberry is really good. Uh, Acerola cherry powder, although the Now brand just recently put, um, a, they mostly have it as ascorbic acid. They're adding ascorbic acid to it. They didn't used to. I don't, I don't know. Radiant Life Catalog has a vitamin C. They used to recommend Now brand and they have now switched to a different brand. I don't remember what it is, but radiantlifecatalog.com or org has another one. So there's different vitamin Cs that you can look at. Also sauerkraut. Sauerkraut has a ton of vitamin C and probiotics. Beautiful. Let's eat some sauerkraut. Now the problem with sauerkraut is some people are having such a strong die-off reaction that they can't eat enough sauerkraut to get enough vitamin C, right? So sometimes we have to do some berry powders or camu camu or something like that, why we get the sauerkraut up. But sauerkraut is beautiful. If I'm really, I 
I don't know if you can tell I'm a little stuffy. I'm really not. It's not really bothersome. I've sneezed a few times. But when I eat half a cup to a cup of vitamin of uh, sauerkraut a day, that's enough C, probiotics and C, to really usually take my allergy symptoms to almost zero, um, even in the peak of things. So it really is helpful to get some vitamin C. There's some discussion with this virus. We'll come back to that about vitamin C. I don't know how much natural news you guys follow. I'm kind of a geek. That's all I, I actually follow on my page pretty much. There's this discussion about vitamin C or elderberry syrup. It causes a cytokine storm. Cytokine storm. Yes, it does because that's what the immune system does. You are just feeding the immune system and allowing it to work harder. Sometimes that may be overwhelming depending on how much toxins you have the ability to deal with, right? So do you see where we come in with why I spent so much time about toxins? Um, you guys are going to be like experts. I'm so excited for you guys to be talking to people about um, with your new expert status. Just send you certificates about understanding this. So when we have tons of toxins, when your body is toxic anyway because of your world and your life and your gut, and then we add a cytokine storm, which sends a whole bunch of chemical mess into the system that can make you feel a lot worse not only because the body is working harder to get rid of the thing that it is trying to get rid of but also like there's just collateral damage and that just makes you feel bad and that could potentially be dangerous so i don't disagree with what they say but they don't they don't get the whole picture right so now you guys have the whole picture that's going to be true with any immune boosting food and i've walked through it so many times with people with the gaps diet we're doing something and then their symptom gets worse, right? It's just like die off. It's toxins in the body that the body's just not quite dealing with. Okay. Calcium is the last nutrient I want to talk about. Um, besides to say, so when I talk about minerals, the body needs all minerals at different amounts. Magnesium is helpful for detoxification. Calcium is really helpful. And we're going to come back to that because that's important. Zinc is really helpful for the skin. So go back to eczema issues and then for, you know, virus or uh, immune attack, bacterial issues, we need enough zinc, right? We kind of know that one. Iodine is also very helpful. It's a detoxifier as well as a cell structure um, necessity. So we need iodine um, in large amounts. We need zinc in large amounts, but not too large for any of these, of course. Um, we need magnesium, but we also need calcium. So let's talk about calcium because it's so cool. How does the immune system use calcium? Calcium is, we think of it for bones and teeth, which is where most of the calcium is. It's the most abundant mineral in our body because bones and teeth. But it's also something that we use significantly in our, our active circulation or the currency of the body. So the currency of calcium, the, the exchange, the exchangeable currency um, is called calcium bicarbonate and this is or, or ca plus plus if you look at a uh, chemistry terminology okay so calcium bicarbonate um, is the currency that the body uses in the system now calcium does many things but the main thing with the immune system that i want to focus on is calcium will Mm, let me say the other thing. So when you have leg cramps, sometimes it's calcium deficiency because calcium has to be present for the muscle fibers to be ready to contract. And if it's absent, you're going to get some tetany. If you fully restrict calcium out of the tissue by doing like a blood pressure cuff too tight, your hand will eventually tetany. Um, and you can't, you can't move it because the muscles have cramped so significantly um, because of the lack of calcium, right? So that's what calcium does. It helps us not do this. Great. Magnesium can also be present. They're in a balance all the time. So, of course, they, you know, play nice and have um, effect on each other. So they're both important to keep in mind. Other thing calcium does is help, well, in that muscle conducting, it's very important for our heart. Our heart. <laughs> I know where my heart is. Um, in our heart, we have muscle fibers that have to conduct and respond to electricity and contract in a very real, common, I mean, happening often rate, right? So a lack of calcium will lead to an irregular heartbeat sometimes. What's the thing that we sometimes get with fevers? Irregular heartbeats, uh, murmurs, right? That's a thing that we can get with a fever. So hmm, interesting. Okay. Calcium also happens when we, or we need it also for the immune system. 
It initiates phagocytosis, which are these eating white blood cells. Um, it also does is involved with something called a calcium wave, which is basically a kill on contact wave of calcium effect in the uh, intracellular space between cells that just decimates bacteria. Just it's done, like kills it. When we have calcium deficient tissues, so they're deficient of the bicarbonate currency, we will get, um, we have a, a susceptibility to disease. So people are asking me, what is the one thing that you're recommending um, in this virus time? And besides that I say, well, eat the way I'm saying, you guys know it now, right? Uh, detox your body, watch your environment, don't eat sugar, um, eat nourishing foods. GAPS is a great thing to be on, even just temporarily be on full GAPS, eat lots of meat stock right now, right? It's just great. But the thing that no one talks about is calcium. Calcium is, is the thing that really stimulates the immune system to work well. Um, without calcium, we don't get phagocytosis. So the eating white blood cells can't come clean up the damage, by the way, just even from toxins, and they can't clean up bacteria. So that's going to be a problem. Um, the other thing that calcium does, the calcium wave. So right, so we, we, we kill bad invading pathogens by having calcium in our tissues. Okay, so why do we not have enough calcium? in our tissues, or what is the sign that we don't have calcium in our tissues? A fever is actually often a sign of calcium tissue deficiency. Why, why do I know that? So when the body raises its body temperature, or the hypothalamus raises the body temperature, that actually allows the body to pull calcium out of the bones into circulation to be used in response for the immune system. Cool, right? So this is also why teething brings fevers. Because if there's not enough available calcium in the bloodstream at the moment that that child is making four teeth and growing, it's going, the body needs it. So it will enact a fever to raise the body temperature to allow the processes of removal um, of the, the calcium from the bones into the bloodstream so then we can build teeth and then we'll redo the bones later which is also why you get achy when you have a fever. Some of it's toxin, um, but when your bones ache when you have a fever, your body's stealing calcium. And that's also why children are so fussy when they're teething because if they don't have enough calcium, because their bones are aching, their, their body's deconstructing calcium structures to get calcium to do the more immediate at hand issue. So what's really cool is there is a supplement called calcium lactate. A few people sell it. I like standard processes because I know they do it well. Um, it's very cheap also, which is great. But we can take calcium lactate, which is one chemical change away from calcium bicarbonate. So it's not, you can't have calcium bicarbonate. It's not stable outside the body, but it's only one change away. So calcium lactate is also found in raw milk products. It's destroyed with the heat of pasteurization. So only with raw milk. Um, it It is converted again when you... Uh, culture milk. So if you have a yogurt, um, you will have some calcium lactate in it. Breast milk is very rich in calcium lactate. So we have these different um, forms and then groundwater, certain groundwaters that are high in calcium, especially back yeast will have some calcium lactate. All right. So we get calcium lactate in our bodies. Great. What do we do now? So the body has to be able to use it. Um, Dr. Royal Lee I think it was him, someone or someone talking about his work um, really has come to the perspective that, you know, someone talking about his work, vitamins are mostly around to move minerals, which is a really interesting thought. But in the form of calcium, I really see it and it makes a lot of sense. So vitamin D, which we know is really essential to the immune system, right? You need a lot of vitamin D. What does vitamin D do? It does help build cells. So that's important. The other thing it does is it absorbs calcium. It puts calcium into the bloodstream specifically. So we were probably taught, you were probably taught in health class like me that vitamin D helps you to absorb calcium. And that is true, but, but incompletely true. So vitamin D puts calcium into the bloodstream. So if you eat it and then it gets into the bloodstream, it's absorbing, right? If you're not eating it. It will pull it from your bones. And this is why we see osteoporosis with, um, high vitamin D, I think what the word is, um, malfunctioning, I guess, um, 
Oh, hopefully you guys can. I just said my connection's unstable. Hopefully we're okay. Okay, so um, vi high vitamin D or any vitamin D pulls calcium into the bloodstream. It happens in the sun too. This is a problem if you have too much vitamin D because it leaves your tissues vulnerable and calcium deficient, which we just talked about that is vulnerable to disease. So that's a problem too, right? So high vitamin D is good, except if it's too high and it pulls the calcium. So what we need to balance it out with is something called vitamin F. It's also called linoleic acid. Um, it is a fat soluble vitamin. Um, as far as I can tell, it's not super studied. So um, at least not in the terms that I see. So vitamin F, um, there is a cataplex F that Santa Process has, um, which is a nice, easy way to take it. Or if you have fermented cod liver oil with concentrated butter oil from green pastures, the concentrated butter oil has vitamin F in it. Okay, so anytime we have vitamin F, we are going to be helpful because vitamin F puts the calcium back into the tissue. So D pulls it out, vitamin F puts it back. So F and D work with calcium. I need a third hand, pretend it's my head. I don't know. No. Vitamin F and D work with calcium to put the calcium where it needs to go. So the best thing would be to have both available in, in proportional amounts, not excessive amounts, um, so that the body can move um, calcium around. So when I have people that are sick, I have them take some um, like calcium lactates, three or four maybe, or some powder. And then I have them take a uh, cod liver oil capsule with each time. So if you are really sick and you have a fever and the calcium helps for about four hours, well, let's take three or four calcium with one cod liver oil capsule every three or four hours when your fever comes back. This is not an antipyretic. We're not fighting the body. We're just giving the calcium so the temperature can go down because now we have the calcium, right? So, and the same with teething. You can give calcium with some fat or with some cod liver oil when your baby's really miserable with teething. and almost all the time, probably if it doesn't work, you just need more calcium. Um, it, it brings the fever down within 15, 30 minutes. It's really fast because the body got what it needed. It doesn't have to have a fever anymore. Baby's comfortable, not crying. It wears off in a few hours. Give him another dose. So not four, <laughs> maybe half um, of a tablet, much less obviously in kids. Okay. So that's what we want to do. So major supports the immune system to re recompass, encompass the foods. So number one, detoxing, limit toxic exposure, figure out what's causing the overwhelm of toxins. Number two, feed the body. This is going to be both um, giving it the specific tools like calcium that it wants. Um, vitamin C is very helpful. Fat, um, proteins for cell regrowth, um, both in the immune system and cells in general. Great. The third thing would be, we just have toxins floating around. Let's get rid of them, right? So there's things called gentle detox methods that are very, very helpful. And I don't have to explain to you guys now why detox baths with Epsom salt help when you're sick, not only when you're sore. Because they're both toxins, right? So anything that we do, oil pulling, sunbathing, if it feels good for you. Some people, it makes them feel worse. Um, grounding. Um, Epsom salt baths, apple cider vinegar baths, um, juicing potentially that can get tricky, not necessarily with illness, but with other things that will be helpful. Um, oil pulling, I already said, saunas, right? All these things. This is why they help. They help because they just reduce the toxic load. The body's pretty simple. Inflammation, toxins, more inflammation. Get the toxins out. Everything feels better. It's pretty cool. Feed the immune system so it can do its job. Feed it good stuff so the gut flora is good flora and good stuff wants to stay around and the bad stuff leaves because it's not needed anymore. So there you go. <laughs> There's health in a nutshell. Super easy. Um, easy to say, not easy to do, obviously, and there are different complications. But So that's, that's the main thing there. Sorry, itchy nose. The last thing I want to say, I don't really know where to throw this in, so I'll throw it in now, is acidify your body. When we are working with the immune system, it has to operate in a slightly acidic environment not an alkaline environment. Let me say that again. The body and the immune system need an acidic environment to operate. There is a lot of people, it's becoming less popular, thank goodness, um, that talk about the alkalizing water. 
The problem with alkalizing water is it, it hinders the immune system. So the, the reason why I got going is because certain experiment tests or, or theories or something showed that cancer cells thrive in an acidic environment. So everyone got scared because we don't want cancer. That's the thing. Um, so we are like, well, let's alkalize the water and that will make it better. The problem is um, the immune system is ultimately the modulator of cancerous cells. So if you alkalize the water um, or alkalize your body to an extreme amount, you are actually leaving your body more vulnerable to cancer. Um, this is the same thing with meat, by the way. If you guys have heard the like meat causes cancer thing, that's because meat is debatably acidic um, and that acidity causes cancer, right? So that's acidity equals cancer, alkalize the body is better. Uh, plants alkalize the body, which is not even actually true. Only some do, um, but that's that's the whole realm. So now you guys know the story behind that. Acidifying the body is good. I have had it happen many times with myself and with others where you're doing all the right things. You're doing the calcium, you're doing the cod liver oil, and you're sleeping, and I'm doing detox bath, and I'm just not getting over something, or I feel just crappy still. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, acidify. And I acidify my body and everything I was doing can work because now the immune system is in an environment where it can function and all of it just works. This is why the apple cider vinegar cure is a book. Because for so many people, they are doing all the right things or their body is trying, but it doesn't have the right environment. So number one, we get good acidity in our stomach and we can digest food. And number two, our immune system is now in an environment where it can fix stuff. So um, it's very helpful to acidify. Apple cider vinegar shots are a great way to acidify. Don't leave it on your teeth for a long term, right? Eat something soon after, drink water, rinse out, something. Um, number two, um, you can do, there's a supplement called Cal Ammo, C-A-L-A-M-O. And this is a, a specific sea salt extract or something. And it's highly acidic. Um, like you don't, I just, you swallow as fast as you can. Um, and you can just taste the acidity in your mouth, but man, it works. Um, so if I can't take apple cider vinegar shots or won't for whatever reason, cause sometimes you just can't do them. Um, I'll take the cal ammo. So I like having that on hand and this includes for allergies. This is why apple cider vinegar shots help people with allergies. Some is a probiotic and hydrochloric acid and all that definitely helpful, but the environment of the immune system should be acidic um, for it to work. So, all right. Hopefully that has left you with so much information about the immune system. I think you guys are experts, um, you know, more than even some of the leading health practitioners. Most health practitioners, um, natural health practitioners even, they don't talk about calcium. Um, calcium is not very studied for some reason, um, but it's hugely important. And they've done a lot of studies. Um, they're being proven again now, but they also did, you know, there's just years of research of journal articles. When they analyze people who succumb to an illness versus ones who healed, there is a statistical uh, certainty. That's not the way you say that, right? There's a statistical significant, a significant statistical significance of hypocalcemia, low tissue calcium for people who died. It's just across the board. It's very clear. Your chances of survival are better if you have enough calcium in your tissues, period, across the board. So that's pretty cool. That's why I'm telling people to do some calcium. Number one, it helps your immune system function. Um just to, to fight off any disease. And then it's just, it's great. And it's not just for this virus. I do it all the time because no one talks about calcium. So it's a thing that I talk about, um, but that's really great. Okay. Any final questions that people want to type in? Thank you for hanging in and listening so long. Um, I love, as you can, I love the immune system. So I love talking about this. Um, if there's any, I'll watch for it, but um, final little thoughts. So we do classes for free. Um, I love to teach. I love to help people understand their bodies and to know how to respond to what their bodies are are asking for. Um, so when that's happening, I'm sorry, I jumped to another thing. So with that, that's great. Um, if you feel led and you're able to and it, it makes sense and you want to support our educational um, 
endeavors. We do have a donate button on under every event page, our event page on our website, bewellclinic.net slash events. There is a donate button under every event um, right now, which is totally, they all just go to the same page. So you can jump on there. Um, that's a Stripe checkout. You can put the amount that you want to um, put in there just to help us keep teaching. Um, also share this video with people. That's why we're doing it on YouTube now. Um, I'm convinced after this one that it's going to be okay. After the autoimmune class, that was rough and I wasn't sure it was a good idea. But after this one, I'm convinced that this will be a great way um, for these videos. Just it's going to instantly go on the YouTube channel for it to be shared with other people. So I'm so excited for that. Um, so please share this. Um, you can subscribe or set reminders for our other live videos. So you can subscribe to our channel and it will like pop up when I go live. Or you can subscribe or just hit a reminder bell for the other videos that are future upcoming videos, which are somehow you can find um, and and show. Um, so you don't even have to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to. You can just hit a reminder for videos that you want to do and it will remind you when I go live. Um, so those are the things that I have, I guess. Um, let me know also what things um, you would love to see classes about, and I would love to teach about them or learn about them if I don't know, and then teach about them. So um, it's been lovely to see you all. Have a lovely night. Nope, no more questions. Okay, have a lovely night, everyone. I'll put the donate button and all the other ones. Hopefully I remember what I said I would do in the description. <laughs> Good night.